some breaking news to tell you about from Alabama involving a former member of the New Orleans Saints. Former defensive end Glenn Foster has died in police custody in Pickens County, Alabama. That's near Tuscaloosa. The coroner there confirms to Eyewitness News Foster died yesterday, one day after he was arrested on charges of simple assault and robbery. Now, the coroner says an autopsy will follow and that an investigation into his death is underway. Foster was an undrafted free agent signed by the Saints in 2013. He played two seasons for the Saints until injuries to his knee and back ended his football career. After football, Foster owned a granite company in the Lower Garden District called Slag. Again, former Saint Glenn Foster, dead in police custody in Pickens County, Alabama. Glenn Foster played football at the University of Illinois and spent two years playing defense for the New Orleans Saints. This weekend, he died while being held in jail in a tiny Alabama town. The chief of the Reform Alabama Police Department say they tried to stop Foster for speeding when he took off, eventually crashing. He admits his officers had some sort of physical engagement with Foster but he was alive when handed over to the Pickens County, Alabama Sheriff's Office. The reform police chief says that out of concern for, quote, erratic behavior displayed by Foster, after he spoke with his parents who said that Foster was diagnosed with bipolar disorder at 20 years old, the chief says he began to make arrangements with the parents to bail Foster out. In a statement on his son's death, Glenn Foster Sr. says, we want justice for our son. It's unfair. It's inhumane. It's just not right. The coroner there confirms to WWL that Foster died two days later while waiting to be released. Illinois State Rep Cam Bugner played ball with Foster at Illinois. When I when I heard the, the news, um, it just was extremely shocking to me. He says that after his concern for the family left behind, the next thing on his mind is the circumstances of his friend's death. The, the, the past does not repeat itself, but it, it does rhyme, right? Um, and, and we've seen um, cases before that appear uh, like like this, and to think that uh, no matter what happened, that he took his last breaths, uh, maybe in a police cell by himself, um, it is really uh, disheartening and, and it's, it's problematic. One of the more confusing parts of this case are these booking records. The first shows a date and time of Foster's release with no bond amount. The second shows a different set of charges altogether, also lacks any release information, but adds a bond charge of $2,800. I, I, I am an attorney, I don't practice criminal law, um, but th th there are there are a lot of questions um, based on what has come, uh, the, the facts that we know uh, as they are right now. Um, I, I have not seen that in, in, in my uh, career, and I'm very curious and interested to why it happened that way and what that means. That was J.D. Career reporting. Foster's friends and family all spoke about him as a gentle giant who loved to help people, which is why those who knew him the best have a lot of questions about what exactly led to his death.